was at dinner time. Prologue. One summer day in Frog Creek, Pennsylvania, a mistress triad appeared in the woods. Eight-year-old Jack and his seven-year-old sister Annie climbed into the treehouse. They found that it was filled with books. Jack and Annie soon discovered that the treehouse was magic. It could take them to the places in the books. They all they had to do was point to a picture and wish to go there. Along the way, Jack and Annie discovered that the treehouse belongs to Morgan Le Fay. Morgan is a magical librarian from the time of King Arthur. She travels through time and space, gathering books. In magic treehouse books, eight to five, I mean five, five to eight, Jack and Annie helped free Morgan from a. Spell, in books nine from twelve, they solved four ancient ancient riddles, and became master librarians. In magic trios books thirteen to sixteen, Jack and Annie had to save four ancient stories from being lost forever. In Magic Trios, book seventeen to twenty, Jack and Annie must be given four special gifts to help free an enchanted dog from a spell. They have already received a gift on a trip to the Titanic, a gift from the Lo Lokatoka Indians. And a gift from a forest in India. Now they are, they are about to set out in search of their last gift. Chapter one, the last gift. Annie sat on the porch steps. She stared down at the Frog Creek woods. Hey, Jack! She said. Do you hear it? Jack sat ne next to her. He was reading a book. Hear what? He said. Teddy's calling us," said Annie. "You're kidding," said Jack. But he looked down the street and listened too. A faint bark came from the distance. "Ef, ef!" A big smile crossed Jack's face. "You hear it?" Annie said. "Yep," said Jack. "You're right. Time to go." He stood up and grabbed his backpack. Be back soon, and he shouted through the screen door. Don't be late for dinner, their their dad called. We we won't, said Jack. He and Annie ran down the street and into the Frog Creek woods. Soon they came to the tallest oak. There was the magic tree house. A little black note stuck out the window. Hi, silly, Annie called. We're coming. Off. Uff! Came a happy bark. Annie grabbed the rope ladder and started climbing. Jack followed her up into the trees. A small dog sat in a circle of afternoon sunshine. His tail wagged. Ha! Hey, Teddy! Said Jack. Jack and Annie hugged Teddy. Then, and he, and the dog licked both of them. Morgan's note is still there," said Annie. "Yep," said Jack. He knew the note by heart now. This little dog is under a spell and needs your help to free him. You must be given four special things: a gift from a ship lost at sea, a gift from a from the prairie blue, a gift from a forest far away. A gift from a kangaroo. Be wise. Be brave. Be careful, Morgan. Beside the note were the gifts from their first three trips: one, a pocket watch from the Titanic, and two, an eagle's feather from the prairie skies. Three. A lotus flower from a forest in India. We just need to get a gift from a kangaroo," 
said Annie, and Teddy will be free from his spell. We must be going to Australia, said Jack. That's where kangaroos live. Cool, said Annie. Teddy whined and scratched at a book lying in the corner. Jack picked it up. What did I tell you? He said. He showed the cover to Annie. The title was "Adventure in Australia." Great," said Annie. She looked at Teddy. Ready to meet a kangaroo? Off, off! Jack opened the book. He found a page with small pictures of different animals and a big picture of a forest. Jack pointed at the forest. "I wish we could go there," he said. The wind started to blow. The trail started to spin. It it f- spun faster and faster. Then everything was still, absolutely still. Chapter two, Sleepy Ed. Jack opened his eyes. Glaring hot sunlight flooded into the trees. Neat hats, said Annie. She and Jack were both wearing hats. I think they will protect us from the sun," said Jack. He and Annie looked out the window. Teddy looked out too. The trees had landed in in a scrubby forest filled with droppy plants and dry brown trees. Man, this place needs rain," said Jack. He sat back on his heels. And looked at the picture of where they had landed in the Australia book. He read, "Australia's forests go through times of drought. Say D R O W D, drought. Oh, drought! A drought is a long period of time without." Any rain, the same forest can be flooded by heavy rains as other times of the year. Jack pulled out his notebook and wrote, "Rent, no rain." Hey, Jack said Annie. Doesn't it, doesn't it smell like a cookout? Jack sniffed the air. It does smell like a cookout. Jack looked out the window. A whisk of smoke floated. Above some trees in the distance, many people were camping over over there. Jack said, "Let's go see." Said Annie. Jack put his notebook and and the Australia book into his back backpack. Put Teddy in there too. Said Annie. Jack slipped the little dog into the backpack. Then he followed Annie down the ladder. When when they stopped. Stepped onto the ground. He, the hot wind nearby, nearly blew their hats off. The campers must be over there," said Annie. "There's a bird. Tweet tweet." She pointed at the smoke in the blue sky. They started walking across a sun-baked clearing. They passed bushes and. Scary trees. Lizards ran over the dry ground. Arf, arf! Teddy barked from Jack's pack. Whoa! Said Jack. A pair of huge, funny-looking birds walked out from behind a bush. They were taller than Jack. They had fat bodies, long, skinny legs, and long, skinny necks. Who are you? And he asked the strange pair. Jack opened his pack and took out the Australia book. He found a picture of the birds. They're emus, he said. He read aloud. The emu, say emu, is a large bird that doesn't fly. It can run as fast as thirty miles per hour. Wow, that's. Fast," said Annie. "Uff!" Teddy jumped out of 